When Telltale first announced that they were going to be tackling the Batman comics for their narrative series, I was really interested. I love the character, I grew up with the excellent animated series, I love the Nolan trilogy and many of the DC animated films, and I like the different take with Batman with Batman v Superman. I feel like one of the awesome things about comics is that you can have many different versions of the same character, whether by tweaking the lore or by having an interesting miniseries arc. And the beauty of this is that some people will gravitate more towards certain versions than others. So I tried to go into Telltale's Batman Season 1 with an open mind. While I did find Season 1 entertaining, I did take issue with how they approached their Batman story. They made a point of having Batman and the Penguin be childhood friends, and having that be the foundation of their relationship. But sadly, that was never developed, and a few scenes showing them as kids or teenagers could have really helped that relationship. There was a scene that did occur like this towards the end of the game, but I feel like that should have been placed earlier. On the other hand, Batman and Catwoman did not lack chemistry, as these parts were the most interesting, along with the parts that you spent with Jim Gordon. Regarding Batman's parents' deaths, they went with a story that made Bruce's father out to be some sort of criminal boss, and essentially made Bruce into someone trying to fight his family's past and prove himself to Gotham. I wasn't really a fan of this approach to the story, it made Batman, who is such a rich and interesting character, character very cliched, and he is anything but that. I had other issues with the first season, but overall there was a lot I didn't like with their execution while also being entertained the whole time, especially during the action sequences. With the Joker being a more dominant figure in the second season, I wanted to give the second season a chance and see if they had improved from the first. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my review for Batman the Enemy Within. Since this is a telltale game, you'll spend most of your time watching cutscenes, making dialogue choices, and sometimes investigating a crime scene and participating in some really good action scenes. While limited compared to their use in the first game, I do like that the investigations do make a return here. Many stories always show Batman beating up bad guys, but I like when they slow down a bit and actually show the world's greatest detective actually doing some actual investigating. The investigations aren't complex, but they're fun to do. You'll be within an environment and have to find and interact with different objects and essentially work out how the crime scene or event took place by piecing together all the clues. The agent woke up here where his body cam fell off. Once he found he couldn't call for help, he saw the message on the monitors and willingly put himself inside the murder box. The agent's shoe caught fire inside the murder box, so he opened it in a panic. As soon as he was out of the box, he ripped off the burning shoe and threw it. Somewhere in the confusion, he must have missed something crucial. The action sequences are generally good. Batman does a lot of punching and kicking while also using a bunch of his gadgets during the fight, like these shot grenades and a lot of batarangs. I do like that Batman can get downright brutal in some of these fights where he's using the batarangs almost like knives slashing out at his enemies. <laughs> Ah! <sighs> 
The first game featured a few action scenes that had the player essentially planning out a string of attacks and then watching Batman execute all of them on his enemies. I like that these were there because they were different and fun to do and they were a bit different and added some choice to the fights. I wish these types of action scenes returned for the sequel. There were very small moments towards the end of fights in the second season where you could choose to decide to have Batman do one move or another, but that was pretty much it. I wish the planned out encounters made their return. The first game had a few instances where you could choose to decide to approach a situation as Batman or as Bruce. I did like how the game approached the side of Bruce, being able to look at both sides of him, both as Bruce Wayne and Batman, and seeing which would be the best for the situation. Sadly, there was only one situation like this in the second season. Part of this is how they approached the story with a large portion of the narrative involving you, Bruce Wayne, being undercover. We will get into more spoiler stuff soon, but I wanted to take a few moments and comment on the story here. I feel like the second season is the opposite of the last season. I felt like the first season started strong and then kept getting worse, starting at episode 2 with some good moments sprinkled in. The second season starts off okay and then gets bad and then starts to get good around episode 3 and mostly that carries through for the rest of the game. There's a lot of Bruce and less Batman in some episodes, but I do like that they take their time to build some stuff even though the pacing is a bit slow. And while there's a good variety of villains, I do think that they should have saved a few for another story because Mr. Freeze is essentially sidelined and the Riddler is not used very well. What did keep the game interesting was the game's different approach to the Joker. It interested me as they didn't go for the Joker story we all know. His parts felt a bit unpredictable and I really didn't know where they were going with him. What is interesting is depending on your choices, the last episode of the game will play out very differently, especially with the Joker. Catwoman does make a return and her sexual tension between Batman is just great. Laura Bailey does a great Catwoman. I forgot how skilled you are with your hands. <laughs> Many of the story elements I didn't like about the first season were not at the forefront here, which I think really helped my enjoyment of the story. If you like these narrative games and then really like Batman, then I'd say check this one out, wait for a sale, you might really enjoy it. Now, let's get into spoilers. Let's talk about the big death that happens in episode 1. They kill off Lucius Fox, and I do not think it worked for the story. I understand it allows Batman to essentially have some emotional skin in the game, and now Fox's daughter has motivation to get involved with Batman, but I think killing him off and the timing of it was just poorly done. We needed more time with him, or something so that when the death happened, it hit hard. I just felt cheated. I felt like they did this just to move the story along so that it could get certain people in a certain place. And this goes for the Riddler as well. Batman has many great villains. The Riddler was always interesting because he always enjoyed taking in the moment to feel like he just beat Batman through some type of mind game or puzzle. When Riddler first enters the scene, he seems more like a psychotic guy who would rather torture individuals for information rather than rely on his mind games. Also, by having Riddler in the game, you could have had some great moments where Batman would have needed to solve some puzzles to get an upper hand on him. But there aren't many here and they kill off the Riddler by the end of episode 
episode one. I felt like this was a huge wasted opportunity for the Riddler. They could have used some C-list villain or some new henchman guy to take his place rather than killing off a major villain that we know. By the time episode one ended, I felt like this was just going to be like the first season. But thankfully, it got better. I did enjoy the tension between Gordon and Amanda Waller. It was that typical state versus fed scenario. I do wish we got more time with Gordon as there was one part that has Gordon and Batman working together in Riddler's hideout and I honestly would love a game that just featured the both of them as the main characters working together. Gordon pops up here and there but he isn't in much of the back half of the game. He has some humor that works especially with his smoking habit. In episode 3 Catwoman returns and like I said before her parts with Batman are some of the best in the game. Their chemistry works and I think a big part of this is because the voice actors are close friends in real life. Lastly I want to comment on the Joker. For most of the game I didn't really know where they were going with him. He wasn't fully Joker but he acted like a shyer version of that Joker we know. He didn't have all the confidence while at the same time you didn't want to turn your back on him. What else caught me off guard was how Harley seemed to have a more dominant presence between the two of them. In all iterations I've seen of Harley and the Joker it's Joker who is the main player with Harley being the sidekick but here it felt more like that Joker was the sidekick. This all changes in the end depending on your choices. You can essentially have Joker end up in one of two ways. Either he becomes a vigilante or he becomes the Joker we know. My choices resulted in Vigilante Joker and it was very entertaining to watch Batman try and save the Joker from him giving into this darker side. As much as Batman tried, by the end of my playthrough the Joker eventually cracked. I believed in you, Batman. Like I never believed in anything. And it was all a lie! <laughs> Before he cracked, there were these small moments that popped up here and there that were very Joker-like. He does have these moments of humor and it felt very in character and some of the best ones that I've seen for the Joker too. Don't go, Gordon. I've got a city to say. <laughs> Please, Jim. You have to let me in. I can't. It's too much. I'm the best friend you have in spandex or whatever my suit is. You can trust me. What if I grew a mustache for you? Batman! Hi! Hello! So, uh, John. My name's John. Overall, I enjoyed Batman Season 2 more than Season 1. The relationship between Bruce and the Joker was different and interesting. I enjoyed all the parts with Catwoman, Gordon, and Alfred. The action sequences were generally good and brutal at times. I do think the game would have benefited from having less villains or a better use of them. I do think a larger cast can work, but the story has to fit that in and that desire to really make all of those players have their moments to shine. Bane got a few fights with the Batman, Mr. Freeze was barely used, and the Riddler was killed off too soon. I hope they don't overstuff their story for the third season. Season 2 is slow to start, but once it gains momentum around episode 3, I found myself enjoying it more and more. I'm hopeful for season 3. Thanks for watching, what were your thoughts on the game, and I'll see you next time.